Meantime, the weight loss drug boom isn't just a benefit to Big Pharma. It might be to the tipping the scale in favor of manufacturing company Jacobs Solutions. Its life sciences business has long-standing ties to Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk. And Barclays sees significant growth for Jacobs as it holds a leading market share with the drug makers. Joining us here on set is Jacobs Solutions CEO Bob Pregada. Bob, great to have you with us. Thank you uh, for flying in and seeing us here on set. Melissa, thanks for having me. Um, when we say dominant market share, it's 60% in it is. life uh, sciences. It is. We, uh, we <laughs> entered the life sciences uh, world almost 75 years ago. Our founder, Dr. Jacobs, actually right here in Brooklyn, uh, was a Merck employee and uh, left Merck to uh, start his own uh, engineering firm. Uh, and, it, uh, and Merck has been a longstanding client since then, and we've diversified uh, in the life sciences world, amongst other uh, infrastructure and uh, in other areas as well over the course of that period of time. So we mentioned your long-standing ties to Novo as well as Eli Lilly, the two manufacturers of GLP-1s, which are the active ingredient in these weight loss drugs. And so, uh, you know, how, how are you thinking about what that adds to your pipeline, which had been at about $27 billion at the end of fiscal full year 2022? Correct. Correct. So if you think about our life sciences business, just in the last five years, uh, driven by two other verticals, oncology drugs as well as um, Alzheimer's and all the advancements that are happening there, uh, we've doubled the size of our business uh, in the last five years, uh, along with chip manufacturing as well. So that, that business has been on a growth train uh, driven by technology advancements, and those technology advancements now have entered the world of, of diabetes with some, uh, some, some beneficial uh, other effects uh, with regards to weight loss. And so we're seeing that in real time. So you mentioned, for instance, cancer drugs as, as being a driver, but what percentage of the growth do you think can be attributable to uh, obesity and the diabetes drug, this category of drug? Moving forward, I think it's going to be likely a majority. Uh, majority we'll, we'll, continue, we'll continue to see. Today, in, uh, we're, we're a $15 billion company uh, in sales, uh, 60,000 employees across 40 countries. Our, our advanced manufacturing uh, work is about $2.5 billion of that. Um, we, could, we could potentially double that in the next three to four years as a result of these megatrends that are happening within, within novel therapies. So how do you forecast out? I mean, you said it's, you think it's going to be the majority of growth going forward, but how do you think about the expansion opportunity that you have in front of you when you hear about the miracle possibilities that these drugs can lead to as being a treatment for addictions, for, to reduce cardiac events, to, you know, eliminate sleep apnea as a treatment for Alzheimer's. I mean, the list goes on and on in terms of the possible applications. How do you think about that growth translating into your business? Clearly, we get, we get excited. Uh, <laughs> we, get, we get excited. I think we would be, uh, we wouldn't, wouldn't be proper for us to be in the business if we didn't get excited. Um, but the other, the other component is the complexity in the facilities really is the unique and dynamic part of our business. And so that science-based technical consulting that we have within the life sciences space uh, is driving innovation and delivery as well. Um, because I think I just uh, saw an interview that David Ricks gave a couple of weeks ago on, uh, on Squawk Box. Capacity was probably mentioned several times uh, in that interview. And when you hear capacity and you hear speed, that's where Jacobs comes to play. How quickly can you help get a manufacturing facility uh, up and, and running? I, for instance, was in Denmark last week, saw the ground at Novo Nordisk being broken at their newest facility. I'm not saying that there's, but I'm just curious, how quickly could that be up and running? These normally take, uh, if, I, if, I were to, if I were to go back five years, then talk about COVID and what happened there and then now, Five years ago, that would have been five years in order to, to, uh, to go from groundbreaking all the way through a validated facility. Uh, COVID taught us a lot, of, a lot of lessons, and it's uh, go as fast as you can because the entire world is dependent on this facility producing vaccines. And so today, we're probably in that two and a half to three year period. Wow. And then after that two year period and that plant is up and running, is your relationship with that particular plant over or is there recurring revenue or recurring business associated with that plan? There is recurring business that, uh, that goes on with that plan. You're constantly making upgrades, looking at innovations that are happening with uh, manufacturing technologies. So uh, there'll be ongoing work uh, on, that, on that facility. Big backlog, almost $30 billion, I think up almost 2.5% year over year. Big margins. How important are government contracts? I saw an EPA contract in early August, I think. Government contracts are very important. Uh, and, and what we're seeing with these legislative actions that have happened and kind of transcending beyond uh, life sciences, with the IJA uh, Act as well as uh, CHIPS Act, 
both here and in Europe, and uh, and the IRA. Um, those contracts are driving our business. I'm sorry. Those acts are driving our uh, our business, and and will be for the foreseeable future.